Good morning, everyone. This is the April meeting of the Nursing Home Financial Advisory Committee. You should be seeing a banner across the top of your screen that does indicate that this meeting is being recorded and a transcription is being provided. Um, just would like to call to order the meeting at 9.32 and welcome. Nick, I am going to defer to you for any opening remarks that you may have. I know Nicole Godburn is not able to make the meeting today. And thank you, Nick, for joining us and co-chairing with us. Uh, no problem. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I have no opening comments, really, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we appreciate everyone being here. And, um, you know, hopefully this will be a great meeting today. Thank you, Nick. So I'm going to start with attendance. Um, Lita Orofici, thank you. I see that you're here. Claudio Gualteri from OPM. Melissa Morton from OPM. Maraith Painter, the long-term care ombudsperson. Michael Morris from Chifa, I see you. Thank you for joining this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Mag Morelli. Matt Barrett. Nick, thank you all. And Betsy Boywood. Betsy, I, th I think I saw that you're on. Um, so for legislators, Senator Matthew Lesser. Representative Jillian Gilchrist. Senator Lisa Seminara. Representative Jay Case. Senator Saud Anwar. Representative Kristen McCarthy Vehi. Senator Heather Summers. Representative Nicole Claridis Dietria. Senator Kathy Austin. Representative Tony Walker. Senator Eric Berthel. Representative Tammy Nuccio. Senator Jan Hockadell. And then our distinguished guests, Commissioner Manisha Jatani. Commissioner Andrea Barton Reeves. Guy Woolston from DSS Medicaid director. Thank so you. So Barbara, I'm yes. not sure we have a quorum. Um, we do not because we have one, two. We do not. Okay. We are not taking any votes today. Um, shall we proceed? Yeah, I think we're going to have to make this for informational purposes only um, and and no votes. Um, so. Uh, um, Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure that this will this qualifies as a meeting under the um, Public Meetings Act. So um, why don't we just present for informational purposes only and then we need to just end the meeting. We're not even going to be able to vote to end the meeting, so um, okay. we can just go through the slide deck 
it's a public slide deck anyway. Um, and we are required to um, do a legislative presentation. Um, I know this meeting serves both as the Financial Advisory Committee, but also as our statutory obligation to report to the legislature. So why don't we go ahead and, and, and just do the presentation and um, and then we will just end the meeting. Perfect. Okay, okay great. Thank you, Lita. So actually, we in, in that case, we wouldn't even do an approval on the minutes because we don't have quorum. No, we can't and, do an approval. Right. Yep. So outside of our call to order, and that was we would have taken a vote there. So let me go on uh, here. This slide just again is a reiteration of the legislative authority or the statutory authority and the charge that's been directed by the legislature. Here is our agenda. And as Lita had mentioned, these will these are public slides, so we will make these available after. Right. And let's just make sure everybody understands we're not doing any call to order. We're not making any votes, anything like that. This We're just going to do a share some information today. Thank you, Lita. So, Nick, I will I will send this to you. This is your DSS slide. Yes, thanks, Barbara. Um, so this is our slide looking at bed capacity and census um, in the state for uh, the current state fiscal year 2024. Um, for the quarter ended 331, um, the average census in the state was 86.7%. So as you can see, we're still on the upswing um, for census. And uh, year to date, so July 1st through March 31st, so for the state fiscal year, our average um, census is 85%. Um, and as you can see as well, the bed count, um, we're down to 22,200 um, beds in the state. And um, this is a decrease of 469 beds compared to December 23. And for the state fiscal year, we've seen a reduction of 757 beds. This slide is just a a uh, visual of the number of nursing homes by bed count. And you'll notice that the sample is 198 nursing homes and the pie chart hey, demonstrates. Hey, Barbara. Uh, this is Mike Morris. I'm just seeing the uh, cover page of the deck. Oh. I don't know about others. What are others seeing? I, 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 can, I can see, I can the, see, pie see the slides. Yeah, I, I can see, see the, the pie, pie chart, chart. too. Are any of the other guests only seeing the introduction slide? Melia, what are you seeing? Melia sees the pie chart. I see the pie chart as well. Huh. Perfect. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, Hi, sorry. This is Hillary Felton Reed. I'm uh, just a guest today. I actually am not, I mean, I'm on my phone, but I am on the Teams and I'm just seeing just a DSS DPH slide that does not have anything on it. So, Barbara, why don't you stop sharing and then reshare and maybe it'll help the folks who are lagging? So I have refreshed it. I'm going to resume at slide five. What are people seeing now? I, I see, see slide five. I see slide five, yeah. Okay, so it, it uh, Michael, you're looking though, I can see you're in, in your office. So it's a, I'm presuming you're using a desktop. Uh, so correct. I think we well, I'm should- using, I'm using a laptop. Can you so, see it now? No. But that's right. We can we can go ahead. I can listen. OK, so slide five demonstrates a graphic that is the number of nursing homes by bed count. The sample currently is one hundred ninety eight. 
Uh, since last reporting period, we have lost one nursing home that had a license capacity of 150. So we are down to 90 nursing homes in the 120, 299 bed capacity. This slide, and again, I'm sorry for those who cannot see the slide, is a graphic that demonstrates across the state where the nursing homes are located and by bed capacity as well. So you, you would see in the slide, and these slides will be made available, that the most heavily populated in the Region 3 area, which is Greater Hartford County and down by the Waterbury area. Nick, I'm going to pass this slide over to you. Thank you, Barbara. So um, slide seven is reporting on uh, nursing home receiverships, bankruptcies, temporary managers, and closures. Um, we currently have one home in receivership, which is Trinity Terraces. It's a 46 bed facility and the receivership was effective at the end of January of this year. Um, we currently have no homes in bankruptcy. We have no temporary managers and for the quarter ended 331, we had one voluntary closure, which was Middlesex Healthcare, um, but we've had four voluntary closures so far for state fiscal year 24. Thanks, Nick. All right, so um, slide eight is reporting on requests for interim rate or hardship rates. Um, so for the quarter ended 331, we received one request that was granted for gear nursing. Um, all the prior requests listed um, are were submitted during prior quarters during the current state fiscal year. And that's it, Barbara, for the Thanks, interim Deb. rates. So this slide will um, informs the person looking at it, the number of changes in ownership we've done since 2022. In 2022, there were 11 change of ownerships that were completed, again, just in nursing homes. 2023, there were 10. And 2024, in the first two reporting periods, uh, we had eight. And you'll note stacked on this third column, we have 11 change of ownerships that are currently pending. And those 11 are at varying degrees of uh, in the application process. So while we have 11 applications that are pending, that does not mean that at the end of this quarter or the end of this calendar year or state fiscal year, they will be completed. Um, not unusual for a change of ownership to start and then they terminate or abort the process in the middle of it. And here we have a uh, change of ownership activity. Again, this demonstrates state fiscal year, which starts July 1, 2023. And the reporting period is through this quarter, which ended March 31st, 2024. And this represents three quarters of the state fiscal year. This past reporting period, which started January 1 to March 31st, there was one change of ownership. And you will see that in March of this year, Essex Meadows down in Essex, which has 45 beds, had a change of ownership. We always report off on nursing home quality and safety issues, and these are the top five federal tags for this reporting period again, which is January 1 to March 31st. Uh, the first, and again, these are in order of frequency in which they are cited. So the most frequently cited in this reporting period is 884. You will recall that we have been reporting off on the last couple of meetings that this is the most frequently cited deficiency and it's the facility's requirement that they report to the National Health Safety Network specific data elements that have been required. Uh, CMS issues the deficiencies, CMS issues the civil penalties that may be associated with non-compliance. The next is 684, and that's relative to quality of care. And a, a broad example is uh, when assessing for compliance with this, are resident needs met in accordance with the plan of care? 
The third is 600, which is free from abuse and neglect. And it typically is surrounded by uh, a failure to provide care timely. 656 is the fourth, which is comprehensive care plans, and typically means that a care plan has not been developed specific to a resident's individual needs. And last, which was surprising for me, is resident records. And we did uh, drill this down to find out what was going on. And it identified that there were a large number of citations related to inaccurate or incomplete documentation in the medical record. This is just a longitudinal representation of what I just mentioned. And you will note in the period September to December, uh, there is some configuration of the same tags with the exception of resident records. And we'll continue as we move forward to demonstrate this longitudinal uh, citation. This slide is immediate jeopardies over time. We did include, now this is federal fiscal year and the federal fiscal year starts October 1 and ends September 30th. And immediate jeopardy is a term that's relative to the federal Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. That's why we choose to use federal fiscal year here. Uh, in 2022, uh, which is the green line here, you'll see that in the last reporting period, that's where we had the most frequent. Um, 2023, not much difference except in that last period. And this reporting period, federal fiscal year 2024, and again, we're in two reporting periods, we have had 11 immediate jeopardy situations. And then this is the breakdown uh, for the immediate jeopardy for the last two fiscal quarters. So in fiscal federal fiscal year Q1, which is October to December, we had seven deficiencies with five facilities. And you can see that F684, 689, 600, 678, and 760. That's the first reporting period. The second quarter, um, you will see that the, the citations are very similar. Um, it's quality of care, free from accidents and hazards, and I did line them up. Free from abuse and neglect, 678 was CPR, significant med errors, and we do have this last tag here, F805, food in a form to meet an individual needs. This is related to, and we've talked in previous uh, meetings uh, about the, the scope of these citations, but F805 in this particular situation, a resident did not receive uh, their diet in accordance with their physician orders. And discussion, that's the end of my slides. Okay, can I just um, ask, did I, did I see that Matt Barrett came on? I'm going to look in. Uh, Matt Barrett, are you yeah, on this? Uh, okay, we did not I have am, a quorum at, at the beginning. You are on? Yes, sir. I am, and I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Matt Morelli on this. Excellent. Okay. okay, so so we now have a quorum, Barbara, so we can go back to um, the call to order and an approval of the minutes. A motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, okay. Who's second? Lita. Thanks, Lita. So we can take a, we can have a discussion then about our next meeting. I did add that to the agenda. Our next meeting is scheduled for July. And when we started these discussions, we did suggest that we would perhaps alternate between doing a strictly teams meeting and then alternating with a hybrid which would be face to face and teams what are individual thoughts about that and again the next meeting is scheduled for july 10th same time 9 30. 
It's the summer. It would be nice, I think, to get together in person. Um, we have a lot of new people. Lorraine, for example, some people have not met in person. Um, Jennifer. We could do that with maybe a hybrid option where if you can't come in, we can set up a screen. Um, and we can we'll find an appropriate location. Will they be at the legislative office building or DSS? Yeah, I think we could probably explore both, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to do hybrid uh, or in person. I say that, let me check my calendar. <laughs> yeah, Barbara, I know DSS would be okay with hybrid. And, um, you know, I can have our administrative assistant look into what rooms are available for July 10th. That'd be great, Nick. So should we take a vote since we do have quorum? I'm here. Do I have a motion? Um, I have a, a mo I move that we have the meeting in um, Jul on July 10th um, in person with an option for um, hybrid participation. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Barbara. Any discussion? So if our members um, could designate with raising their hand, if you're in support, Mag and Matt, I see your hands. Um, Lita, thanks, Michael. Okay, motion moved. So last slide is discussion. I put that out to the group. Lita. No, I have no. I, oh, oh, I didn't mean oh. to raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, just uh, if I could just briefly uh, uh, be recognized, Barbara. Please, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to um, um, again um, offer praise for the um, for the DSS and DPH uh, reports presented today. Uh, particularly the beginning of capturing uh, trend lines and a sort of long longitudinal perspective, and also um, indicate that the quarterly meetings that uh, uh, we're having with DPH, uh, where we drill down on some of the, the common experiences and the most um, uh, uh, cited uh, 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 deficiencies, which uh, which uh, DPH went through with us just last week. Um, is uh, tremendously valuable. In fact, uh, I'm sure uh, Leading H did something similar, but but we drafted a memorandum uh, to our members, an internal communication based on what DPH had identified for this continued sort of emphasis on focus and concern. I don't at CHCF have the capture the uh, the uh, the aggregate material that DPH uh, uh, captures and shares with us, and so it's just tremendously valuable in terms of putting putting a focus and attention on the areas where DPH is acknowledging where uh, more work needs to be done. And so, I just wanted to make that comment for the record, Barbara. Thank you, Matt. Um, I can I be recognized? Please, Matt, go, Matt, go ahead, please. Or just one of the things you know, and some of the conversation that we've been having. Um, from the, the industry sector in the last couple of weeks have been about the Medicare rules and Medicare Advantage, the in proposed rule. And I think that the Medicare rates are very important to, um, and the practices of the Medicare Advantage plans are very important to the financial health of nursing homes in the state. So I don't know if at some point in the, you know, in future agendas, if we want to at least raise that for awareness, um, Maybe it's just a, a, a topic because, you know, as legislators and agencies are talking and we're talking about financial health of the of the sector, I think that the P Medicare piece is really important. I know it's beyond our control, but I think it's an important factor to have in the discussion if we're talking about the financial viability of the sector. So thank you, Mag, for that comment. Nick, is that something that you have the expertise to discuss? I, I can tell you at DPH that we are not the subject matter experts about Medicare Advantage plans. I just don't know where we would, who would, who would you suggest, Mag, a, well, a presentation by someone? Nick, unless you have yeah. thoughts. 
Um, so I will to report out directly. I am not a subject matter expert on the Medicare Advantage plans and, and the rates at this point in time. Uh, so, you know, and I don't know if one, I can check with my colleagues, of course, um, as well. But, you know, we might be better off, Barbara, having someone present that information. Maybe Barbara, a maybe? guest? Would, would, yeah. you, would you like a guest presentation or? Yeah, and if we if we set a certain date, I think that by June they probably will have been settled on the proposed rule, right, Matt? Will be finalized. So maybe the July, Matt and I can work on trying to find either someone from one of the accounting firms or someone from one of our national associations who can just give us sort of a background on it, um, and uh, and particularly the Medicare Advantage situation right now in in the state, because we you know we're over fifty percent Medicare Advantage. Um, and it, it really has made a, a significant impact on the financial health of, of several nursing homes. So, so Matt, you, you'll be in touch with us with yeah. a name of a speaker, and we can certainly build that into the agenda. Great. Thank you. Other discussion? I, okay. I move. I a, move. A motion. We, yeah, I move <laughs> that we adjourn. Okay. Second. I can second that, Barbara. Thanks, Nick. Thank you all. We'll see you all in July. Thank you. And I'm Thank hoping you. we're going to see you Thank all. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.